Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and continuing on our series of covering the end of character arcs in My Hero Academia and where we think they're going to go, we're going to talk about Bakugo. I feel like it's a very, very fitting time to talk about Bakugo, clearly. We're going to mix this into our chapter review for this week, so we're going to be talking about the end of Bakugo in My Hero Academia, where his story could possibly go from here if it does go anywhere else before the end of My Hero Academia, and what's going on in this chapter where it seems like we are actually seeing the end of Bakugo Katsuki, the hero known as Dynamite. Let's talk about it more after that intro. Hit it! So I've already done more videos in this series talking about where I think character arcs are going to end in My Hero Academia. Actually, we have one for Endeavor. We have one, I believe, for Mirio and various other characters that aren't actually in danger immediately. Well, I guess now they are in the manga, but aren't actually what seems to be dead, right, in the series. But now we have a weird situation where I was planning on doing a video about the end of Bakugo sometime soon before the next season came out, just saying where I think his character arc could end. And now we also have a chapter coinciding, right, with what could potentially be the end of Bakugo. So let's talk about what happens in the chapter first, and then we'll talk about some of the predictions that I might have had for where Bakugo's character could have gone, and what I think could happen now. So, during the fight with Shigaraki and everything, I don't want to really cover all the stuff that happened with Tamaki, because we've talked about that earlier this week, so we can just really quickly glance over that. Tamaki shot the beam at Shigaraki, it didn't do anything. Moving on. Bakugo ends up getting up right next to Best Genus, right? And we know that Bakugo has pretty much been ragdolled at this point by Shigaraki all for one and thrown around. One of his eyes isn't missing, but it's pretty much hurt so bad that I don't think he can see out of it in any sort of meaningful way. And then we see cuts and all sorts of like wounds leading up to his face on that left side of his face, or I guess it would be the right side, right? As Shigaraki gets up and says, look after the others to Best Genus, we see Shigaraki really turn and like, make sure to pay attention to Bakugo here. Like, he really quickly is, like, aggravated, it seems like, because you see his eyeballs kind of, like, change. They kind of, like, strain a little bit. Like, he's like, huh, you. Let me take care of you right now. So we see Bakugo walking towards Shigaraki, and in the proper translations, which we have on Viz, you could go read the chapter right now, Bakugo says, gotta win. Right, Izuku? Which is cool, because that's one of the only times in the series, right, where he properly calls Deku by his name. And Genus tries to pull Bakugo back, right? Like, using his threads that he has around him, he tries to lay Bakugo back down, I guess. But Bakugo, like, speed blitzes, right? And, like, fills Shigaraki's face with explosions as he goes behind him and starts attacking him and dodging his attacks and everything. And, like, immediately we have to talk about how impressive it is that Bakugo is speed blitzing a character who is said to be All Might level, right? Who we know for a fact, due to all of his feats so far, he is All Might level, right? And Bakugo is completely speed blitzing that person. So I guess in a certain way, you could say that Bakugo did surpass All Might, right? In a certain sense. Like he's been trying to do that for his character arc over the whole course of the series. So I feel like that's one way that this kind of came true, despite the ultimate outcome of what happens in this chapter. So as Bakugo continues his assault on Shigaraki, dodging his attack, like he said last chapter, right? Faint, he kind of does exactly that and starts taking care of Shigaraki using his new explosions, right? Now, we know that Bakugo had a quirk awakening in the last war arc when he was trying to save Deku, but that all really stems from his training with Endeavor, right? Where he was told to pretty much compress and use his quirk in a certain way, and that led to that awakening, which now further leads to this current awakening that even Bakugo wasn't completely aware of. But it makes perfect sense, and I really like the way the official translation handled it. The official translation for Bakugo's quirk and everything going on with it says the sweat glands on his palms produce a nitroglycerin like liquid that he can detonate but the cluster upgrade that he devised came with a side effect even he himself wasn't aware of the act of saving up sweat into launchable beads put a terrible burden on the glands in his palms with his sights set on victory he kept storing those beads in his glands until they were forced to find other exits and leak out all over his body explosions all over his body gave him even more speed and it pretty much is what happened to Koichi, right, in My Hero Academia Vigilantes, where Bakugo is now able to use his quirk that he was only able to use through his hands originally all over his body, and it gives him a massive sort of Ultra Instinct-like boost, right? Because he doesn't really have the dodging property of that. If he was fully healthy and had this awakening, though, it would be crazy. It would be unthinkable, right? Like, Bakugo is very, very much getting into Deku territory with this awakening. And I think that's something that a lot of people had trouble envisioning how he would do that. 
but it's very, very unfortunate that it comes at this moment where Bakugo is wondering, so Izuku, can I still catch up with you? And it's like, you really might have, buddy, but it's a little too late. So Shigaraki gets angry, like a little too angry, right? He starts thinking like, why am I getting so mad? Why am I panicking right now? And then he sees a vision of the second user who looks like Bakugo, of course, but has different color eyebrows and a scar in a completely different place on his face. So that's probably Bakugo's great grandfather or something like that, right? There's definitely some sort of relation there, but I think that's kind of where it stops. So we see Shigaraki and Bakugo clashing for what's gonna be their final clash, right? And Shigaraki's panicking actually. He's wondering why he's so scared. And he sends an attack towards Bakugo that has eyeballs on him. Remember last chapter we theorized that the next thing Shigaraki was gonna do is gonna be eyeballs. That's great. He has like a whole face on there with a nose and eyebrows and everything. It seems like Shigaraki's working on making a clone of Shigaraki. Imagine that. Like Madara with the wood clones versus the five Kages, right? But with a bunch of Shigarakis. That'd be gross. I wonder if they'd have to be attached to them somehow. That might be even grosser somehow. But that's when we reach the pivotal point of this chapter where Bakugo sees a vestige of All Might, obviously, and he pretty much understands, right, like what is going on here, it seems. And he tells All Might that now it looks like he's missed his chance to have All Might give him an autograph on the card that Deku and Bakugo both got when they got ships when they were young that was pretty much a collectible All Might card, right? So we see Shigaraki pierce through Bakugo's heart with his attack, and Bakugo's heart explode, and he sends Bakugo flying. Not even into Bezgenus' arms. It doesn't look like Bezgenus necessarily catches Bakugo, and Bakugo gets skipped like a rock across the ground. It's really, really hard to watch considering that this is like his mentor, right? This is like All Might watching Deku get tossed like this and, and taken out like this. I really, really feel bad for him. And then on the next page, we see Bakugo's parents. As it starts raining and everything in the location, Bakugo's parents start thinking how much Bakugo hates the rain and how much he doesn't like it. So it's a very, very somber moment. Best Genus looks shocked. Everyone looks shocked. Mirko, Aizawa, Mirio, even Monoma, right? And Best Genus says, his heart, dot, 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 exclamation mark. And then the final pages of this chapter are Bakugo in very, very high detail, laying on the ground with his eyes fading away and a massive wound in his chest. And we saw the heart in there. There was pieces of it missing. And next to him lies the All Might card that it seems he was actually clutching in his final moments, not just in the vision. It looks like there was actually like, you know, when you hold a card too hard and you bend it in a certain way, it looks like he was holding it in the same way that he was holding it in that vision. And it lies next to him in a pool of blood, unsigned. Now, where did we think Bakugo's story could have gone here? I definitely thought it was possible for him to have some sort of further awakening and reach Deku's level. Of course, we saw Bakugo being up there with like the number one or two hero. If Deku didn't survive, he would have definitely been contender for number one eventually. If not, he would have been in Endeavor's place sort of, right? Of being the number two, chasing after the number one in a much more healthy way. Because throughout the series, we know that Bakugo has actually had a lot of parallels with Endeavor. And they actually do get along. And Endeavor is definitely a very good trainer for Bakugo to have, right? As much as Endeavor's training style didn't work out for his own family, it definitely worked out fantastically for Bakugo, right? Because he got him to take his quirk very seriously and understand it in a different way that he didn't understand it before. And that just took Bakugo to some insane new highs that he never would have reached on his own, right? So it's like, by working together with others, by kind of exampling more of a Deku style, right? Bakugo grew in a really, really awesome way, and I feel like this is a very great parallel to how Deku is always taking things from Bakugo, right? Like, throughout the series, you've seen Deku pretty much use Bakugo's moves, even starting from that first slam, starting to how he uses full cowling to move around. Like, it's very intentional that he uses what he's learned from Bakugo from watching him from so long to grow, and now we see Bakugo doing the same thing, pretty much going full cowling with his explosions, right? Like, it's it's really crazy that that's more or less what he's done by covering his body in explosions and having that make him move so rapidly, right? And so crazily to the point of blitzing an All Might level opponent. So much respect to Bakugo. I think the only place the story could possibly go from here is gonna be in the Vestige world, right? We know that there still is a Vestige battle looming between Deku and Shigaraki. Once Shigaraki tries to take the quirk from Deku, that's gonna activate the quirk tug of war where the all for one user is trying to take in the quirk one for all, right? And take all the vestiges with them in just a moment. And we're gonna see a long battle probably within the vestige world between all the different vestiges of one for all and all for one and his many, many minions who are probably gonna turn against him because of New Order's quirk, right? So that's gonna come full circle. And that's where I think we might see Bakugo again. 
Now, a lot of people know that I am very against the idea of Bakugo surviving because I feel like it's a fake out in the narrative. Not because I want Bakugo gone necessarily, like I definitely don't. I actually became a very, very big fan of Bakugo's character in Heroes Rising. And ever since then, I've had a lot of respect for his character and the way that he's evolved and changed, right? So I definitely didn't want Bakugo to be gone. I definitely thought that he would reach some awesome places in the story. But for those of you who want me to theorize, because I know a lot of you like the way that I theorize specifically, for those of you that want me to theorize how it could be possible, the one way that I would accept personally, not like some random BS that people are making up, like Aerie is going to be there, all that stuff is debunked, right? We know those people are nowhere near and they don't have energy to do anything, and the second quirk user is not going to have a healing quirk. What is the one way that Bakugo could somehow survive the situation and be saved? That's the next video we're going to talk about, how Bakugo can be saved. Chill here on the channel and watch some other videos in the meantime, but we are going to be talking about that immediately, so check back in just a couple hours and I will have that for you. But for now guys, this is Pineapple and I'll see you guys later. Peace.